water gains a hydrogen ion, it becomes hydronium, H3O+. When water loses a hydrogen, it becomes hydroxide, OH-. When water interacts with other water, it will self-ionize, meaning one molecule will break apart, giving a hydronium ion and a hydroxide ion. This occurs only to a very, very small extent. It would be more accurate to draw the double arrow so that the forward reaction was much smaller than the reverse. Most water molecules will stay as water molecules and not separate into ions. The concentration of hydronium is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th power, a very, very tiny amount. And the concentration of hydroxide ion is the same because they both came from the splitting of a water molecule. Water is a neutral compound because the concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide are equal. If it was unequal, the solution would be either acidic or basic. If the concentration of hydrogen ions increased, the concentration of hydroxide would decrease, and it would be an acidic solution. If the concentration of hydrogen is decreased, then the concentration of hydroxide would increase, and it would be a basic solution. Basic solutions are also sometimes known as alkaline solutions. Since the concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide ions is inverse, we can calculate their constant, which is always 1 times 10 to the negative 14th power. Take a look at this table. As the concentration of hydrogen ion decreases, the hydroxide increases, but their product is always 1 times 10 to the negative 14. If you look at the exponent on the hydrogen ion concentration, you'll notice that the numbers go from 0 to negative 14. The scientist Sorensen knew that if you take the log of an exponent, you get the exponent. But he also liked the look of positive numbers, so he came up with this formula. The pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ion. Now on the pH scale, acids have a pH below 7, and bases have a pH above 7. 7 is the neutral pH. The pH scale measures the power of hydrogen, and the pOH scale measures the power of hydroxide. Since they have an inverse relationship, the pOH scale has numbers in the opposite direction. So an acid with a pH of 3 has a pOH of 11. The pOH can be calculated from a concentration of hydroxide ion in the same manner as pH. pOH equals the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. The pH plus the pOH will also always equal 14, so you can easily find the pOH if you know the pH and vice versa. Now, significant figures in pH and pOH scales are a little bit different than your usual numbers. Because the digits before the decimal denote the exponent, it's only the numbers after the decimal that count as significant figures. So, for example, the pH of 6.725 has three significant figures, and the pH of 10.37 has only two sig figs. Let's try a calculation. What is the concentration of hydrogen ion of a solution with a pH of 8.00? We know that pH equals the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen, but we need to rearrange this equation to get concentration of hydrogen by itself. We need to divide both sides by the negative log. Dividing by log is called inverse log or anti-log. On your calculator, it probably looks like 10 to the x power. So our equation is anti-log times negative pH equals concentration of hydrogen. Let's plug in the pH we're given and calculate. We'll get 6.3 times 10 to the negative 9 molar, which has two significant figures, and m molar is the unit of concentration. Now let's try one with a couple of steps. What is the pH of a solution with a hydroxide concentration of 2.0 times 10 to the negative 10? Now we know that pOH equals the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. So we can plug in our concentration to find the pOH, which is 9.70. We also know that pH and pOH always add up to 14. So all we have to do now is a little bit of subtraction. 14 minus 9.70 gives us 4.30, which is the pH. So in this case, our solution is an acidic solution. A quick way to test the pH of a substance is to use indicators. They'll change color in the presence of an acid or a base. Now, they aren't always the most reliable source because temperature can distort their color, and if the substance you're testing already has a color to it, the indicator color will be difficult to see. A pH probe will be the most accurate tool for measuring pH.
Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.